everyone, my name is Louis McConnell, and today I'm looking to teach you a little something about memory. Here we go. So if we had to look at all the mammals, we'd probably find around, this is a rough F estimate, 5,300 species. And this is on all of planet Earth. So what is there to know about mammals? Well, in a later video, we're going to get start getting into some of the characteristics of mammals. But for right now, I just want you to know that mammals are members of a larger group known as amniotes. Now, a long time ago, these amniotes branched off into two distinct categories. One of them was the mammal, and one of them was the reptile. And then there were a whole bunch of other little categories going this way, etc., etc. But I really want to focus on this branch right here. All right. So, what is an what is an amniote? Well, we know that mammals are known as members of this group that's called amniotes, but an amniote is just a tetrapod which is just a four-legged organism as we can see by this prefix tetra with an amniotic egg. And this egg is very special indeed. It contains four specialized membranes. Let me clear up a little bit of space here. We have, first and foremost, the allantois. have the amnion, we have something that is known by many as the yolk sac, and we have something that today we're going to refer as the chorion. So first things first, I want you to imagine a tiny little embryo. Here is your embryo. This is a human child. The first thing that we have is the amnion. This amnion goes all the way around, and inside the amnion, we have some amniotic fluid. physical membrane is known as the mambryon, but the area inside is the amniotic fluid. Excuse me, amniotic fluid. Now this fluid basically serves to protect the embryo and make sure that it's safe and alright. The next structure that we have is known as the yolk sac. The yolk sac is a fascinating and unique structure indeed. Basically what happens is, is the yolk sac comes out right here with a bunch of little red blood veins. Just imagine these are veins. All right. The yolk sac contains the yolk, a stockpile of nutrients. Blood vessels in the yolk sac membrane transport nutrients from the yolk into the embryo. Other nutrients are stored in the albumin, or egg white. So basically, think of it like this. Around this entire thing, we have another membrane. And this membrane isn't really mentioned. But basically, right out here, we have something called the albumin, which 
which are just nutrients floating around. But inside here, we have something completely different, which is known as the chorion. It's another little membrane right here. I'll try and draw this well. And this membrane is used to exchange gases between the embryo and the air, and oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse freely across this shell. So in, we're going to have oxygen, and out, we're going to have carbon dioxide. Okay. But this isn't the only structure that's responsible for this. The other structure that's responsible is known as the allantois. And the allantois presses right up against the chorion. All right. And the allantois is a disposable sac for certain metabolic waste produced by the embryo. The membrane of the allantois also functions with the chorion as a respiratory organ. So basically, this is what, what, um, what overviews oxygen entering and carbon dioxide leaving. It ensures that all the stuff going into the membrane makes it into the embryo so that it can breathe and it receives all the nutrients that it needs very happy embryo. So this whole thing, all of these membranes, because they do not include the embryo, they are known as extra, this is a big word, extra embryonic membranes.